Hi, this is Mr. C from Divi Den. In this video, we're going to discuss the email opt-in modules, which are part of the Unicorn Bundle. Uh, let's start with the first one. Let's quickly have a look and see what it looks like on the front. Uh, so there's three different uh, service providers which come with the email opt-in kit from Divi. Uh, you've got the MailChimp, you've got Aweber, and you've got FeedBurner. The way these are set up by default is MailChimp, when you create a new MailChimp account, it defaults to three fields. That's why we have name, surname, and email address. On the other hand, Aweber only asks for two, so it's name and email address, and a very well-known feed burner, it's been around forever, just takes an email address. Each of these are set up in a different way, um, and when we created these modules, we had to create different styles and set them up for each of these different service providers. We, we made them responsive, as you can see here. Uh, let me just make that smaller. So all these modules are 100% responsive and they different for each of the different service providers. So uh, let's import one of these modules and then uh, we can show you how they work. Before we import, let me show you quickly the files that come in the zip. So we've got a master JSON file, which are all of them, one and two, five. We have the master email opt-in module kit CSS, which also uh, has all the CSS in one go. And then we've separated them out because you might want just number one or number two, import them independently, uh, and those go along with the CSS files. In addition, we have a file called the code for functions.php. Um, those give you the model focus actions, which we'll show you in the video further. We've also made some JPEG files because you might be wondering, oh, wh what does this one look like again? I can't remember. So you can just quickly click on that, open it, and then you know exactly which one it is. So it's easier for you to export. Then we also have the Adobe Photoshop file so that you can adjust these and customize them completely the way that you need. We also have the README file which contains further information which may be useful to you. So let's get started. Let's go to the dashboard of our demo site, then to Divi, Divi library, import, export, import again, let's choose the file. There it is. Uh, I think what we're going to do is let's just import the big one so we can see all of them. That's the JSON file we're looking for. Then you click import, wait for it to import and reload. There we go. Then we've got all of them. Uh, so let's just go with uh, module number one. Let's make a sample. I'm just going to copy that because I need it as a page title. So let's go to pages, let's go add new. You can put in your test and then 105, use the view builder. Then I'm going to use a blank page template just because it's easier to display. And then we're going to import add from library, not load from library, add from library. Let's click on that. And then let's choose opt in module number one. And then we can publish the page and have a quick look at it. There we go, it's imported. As you can see, we're missing the CSS styles. So that we need to go and add. Let's go to Divi and theme options. And then we can navigate to the bottom. We want to go to the CSS file, which you would already have downloaded. So let me open that. For now, we're just going to import uh, all the CSS. You can import them independently. I mean, nobody wants to have extra CSS code on, on their site, so you can use them independently if that's what you want to do. In this case, I'm just going to import all of it. Uh, so let's click on that. Then you want to copy all of this. And then we want to go back to the custom CSS section. Let's paste that in. Let me just show you it's all there and then go save changes now if we go back to the test page and we reload there we go you can see our styles are there 
and it's nicely responsive. But we're missing the nice animations which you may have seen already. In order to get this nice action, we need to go and add some code to the functions.php file. And for that, we can go to our dashboard once more. Um, it depends on what your hosting company is. You have appearance and then editor. This may be hidden because of a plugin on your site. Security plugins normally do that. Alternatively, you have um, uh, managed hosting and they would prevent this from being visible. It's just the safety uh, thing that they do. If that's the case and you can't see appearance editor, then you have to do this by FTP. So log into FTP, navigate to your theme, find the file. In this case, we're just going to do it over here through this because we can. So I'm going to my Divi child theme and then I'm going to theme functions. There we go. There's our functions file. And then normally you would scroll right to the bottom. Then I'm going to navigate again to the zip file. I'm going to look for code for functions.php, open that in your favorite text editor. We just want to copy all of this. Let's switch back. And then what you want to do is add it just before the closing question mark and tag there. Always make sure that there's no spaces, especially after the closing tag. Then what we can do is just hit update. And now, if we go back to this and we reload, we'll see the actions. Excellent. That's exactly what we were looking for. So, the next thing is, how do we set up this email module? It can be quite tricky in the beginning. Once you understand how it works, it's actually quite easy. Uh, each of the different mail providers uh, behave slightly differently. So, let's go to uh, edit page. Let's go and have a look and see what there is. So, uh, as you may already be aware, we have three different ones. We've got MailChimp, we've got FeedBurner, and we've got Aweber. Now, let's just start with MailChimp. So, if you've got MailChimp, you want to click this Add button. Uh, you can also find further instructions on exactly how to do this in the Divi documentation. I'm just going to go through this quickly uh, while we're here. You might as well uh, find out how to do it. So you click add, then you want to add the account name. That's just for reference. API key, you would then add that's after you've created your account already um, and the details are there. You can click on it, go and find out how to do that. Once that's added, then you click submit and then it will load the list for you. You then select the list and from there you can continue to set it up the way that you need. The same would apply for a Weber. You're just going to add your account name, then you're going to add your API key, then you click submit and then it will load the relevant list for you. One thing I'd like to share with regards to FeedBurner, this was a tricky one for me uh, when I set it up the first time. Um, when you create a new feed in FeedBurner, it gives you quite a full URL. So the whole HTTP FeedBurner, blah, 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 it gives you that whole string. Now, even if you set it up to allow email uh, subscribes via email, uh, you can still get a message, an error message from FeedBurner that says this account isn't enabled to subscribe via email. And what I discovered was that this title that you add here should simply be your feed title, just the name, not the complete URL. So there's a tip for you. Make sure that if you do get that error, first of all, make sure that that setting is activated on your FeedBurner account, which is listed inside FeedBurner. Um, I believe it's also listed on the Divi documentation. I'm not 100% sure. Um, but make sure that you just enter the feed name, not the complete URL, and then it will work. 
So I'm not going to do much further. I think uh, what we have here is for everything that you need to know. Then you can click save and exit, do your thing and obviously update the page. And then from the front, then you always want to test that guy. <laughs> make sure that you submitted and tested and make sure everything works the way you expect. Uh, customers contact forms are incredibly important especially subscribe forms as well you always want to test there's always some bug somewhere that you're not thinking of or something that you haven't tested here's my recommendation test 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 and um, that concludes this video thanks a lot for watching ciao